welcome Rabbitohs members and supporters to another episode of the Rabbitohs Insider. What a week it was with the boys set to rumble in Rockhampton, only for the game to be postponed until the following day. It didn't stop them putting on a show at Suncorp Stadium though, as we now turn to John Sutton and Mark Ellison to review some of the best from last Sunday's action in the Playmakers, proudly brought to you by Zoom Video Communications. Well, welcome once again to the Playmakers, brought to us by Zoom Video Communications. John Sutton, our former captain and premiership winning captain, joins us again. How are you, Sato? I'm good, Marcus. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad, mate. It's uh, We're getting by the... Yeah, the days seem to turn into all or one. That's it. You, yeah. you sort of tend, tend to forget what day it is sometimes. But um, as you're probably aware, we're back in um, in a lockdown situation now. We're pretty similar to Sydney. The only thing with us, we're in a sort of resort, so there's a bit of room to move around. But yeah. apart from when you're in your room, you have to have a mask on. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's everyone's used to it, and we know we've got to do it to get the game on. But uh, I am missing the bra, mate. <laughs> well, it's been good down here, a um, bit of surfing, so um, you know, I've been pretty happy with that, but yeah. Yeah, I do miss do miss you and all the boys, it's um, it's pretty hard to watch on the, on the TV, but wow. as long as we're going good. And, uh, yeah, yeah exactly, but as I say, you say it's pretty good down there, it was, it was pretty good at Suncorp the other night too against mm-hmm. the Dragons with the boys. Um, you know, particularly after the day we had the day before, did you hear much about what happened? Yes, yeah, so I, yeah. I spoke to um, Cody. He said he's just right, arrived in Rockhampton and then straight back on the plane. So yeah, yeah, we we ended up uh, we left the hotel at eight thirty in the morning and got back at quarter past three in the afternoon. And that the whole time we'd just been sitting and that you know and and with the boys you know they're they're highly tuned, obviously athletes and you know plays a bit bear with their backs and things like that and hammy. So they uh, that's why I think the performance uh, on Sunday night under the circumstances were pretty good because the Dragons didn't leave the hotel. Yeah. So they had the whole day to prepare and you know, we had different circumstances, but it was a good performance. And yeah, it just shows how mentally tough the boys are and how much they really want it this year and they're playing for each other. And yeah, it doesn't matter what gets thrown at them, they're always up for the challenge. Yeah, there were some really good signs with our attack starting to come together again the other night. Particularly a few of the early tries. Uh, one was from Latrell. And then Cody backed it up not long after. Same side of the field again, the, the lethal left, as we're starting to call it. Uh, what happened with those plays, mate? How, how did you see them unfolding? Yeah, well, um, obviously, I think Adam makes a little half break on the um, first try. But with that shape, um, with Cody and Latrell there, it's very hard to defend with both of them being so talented. And, um, you know, the boys running right lines, but uh, when they get the plays on, how they want to, it's very hard to stop. And, um, you know, we've seen that the other night. If you get Latrell outside his man and, you know, one-on-one with him, it's very hard to stop. So I thought it's a beautiful play for us to run. Um, we're going to see a lot more of it coming into the later rounds. But I thought, you know, with Latrell running, it's perfect for us. Um, yeah. If we go to the next try, it's a very similar play. It's just with Adam and Cody doing the, doing the play. So, you know, the boys can mix it up. Um, teams don't know what we're throwing at them and it doesn't matter who it is Adam and Cody or Latrell, Cody you know it's just um, it's just great to see that they can all do the same position and you know execute with um, perfection and then we go to the right hand side when Tane Milne goes across the line uh, and there's different ways involved again but doing different things too I suppose yeah, um, obviously when we go to the right, um, everyone's running these sorts of shapes. We've just got so many different variations on them. It's hard for teams to defend. Obviously, we had uh, Adam, Cody and Latrell all over that side. Um, you know, Renault played nice and deep into the line. Cody held the ball up. They were looking at Latrell out the back and he played short to Tane. So, you know, they're just mixing it up. Playing really good footy. Our attack's really good at the moment. We often see what happens as a result of the play. But Renault's been doing a really good job too. You say going to the line. What is going to the line, what Renault's doing? What does that do to the defence? Well, you need, you need to do your playmates to go deep in the line because it holds up the defenders. 
Um, if they pass early, they can just slide off and man up. But, you know, Adam's doing, always been doing a great job this year, straight right into the line and giving Luttrell and Cody that time out the back to, to play footy and, you know, do what they do best. We had that little period in the game. I mean, we talk about how good we were attacking-wise. Yeah, you know, we're great to watch. I think everyone likes watching us play football. We just had that little five, ten minute period again where we gave penalties away, we made some errors, we put ourselves under enormous pressure again, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. I think with those periods, we just have to um, concentrate and fight a little bit harder. It's only, it's going to go away after that set, um, you know, but it has been something in our game that, you know, we need to cut out. Um, Coming into the final, we need to make sure that we're playing for the full 80 and um, you know, not giving up, up soft tries. Yeah, we'll be tested this week. We've got to play against the Parramatta Eels. They're actually staying in the same same place as we're staying. It's a, it's a little bit different to what you're used to, but people are getting on with it, you know. But you don't often see the opposition during the week leading into the game. But, you know, they're desperate. They're desperate to win. And I mean, you know, we, we, we should be bolstered this week. We get. Cameron Murray back. It's great to have him back in the middle. That, that stiffens the ship up there. And uh, Junior Tatala coming back in the side. That should strengthen us as well. Yeah, no, them two quality players, uh, big part of our team. Um, you know, Junior's coming off that knee injury, but um, he'll be ready to go. And, you know, love, love to have Cam back because he holds that middle so well for us. And he's, the, um, he's a link to our halves, from Cookie to our halves. He's, he's a man in the middle there. So, no, good to have the boys back and um, really looking forward to this week. Power definitely going to be up for it. Obviously, that a, you know, a big loss on the weekend. So, we're looking forward to this game and we'll see where Power are at. We'll see where we're at with going to the finals. Exactly right. And Wayne made a comment at the press conference after the game. We had seven regular first graders out. And we did. You know, and, um, you know, the the guys are slowly trickling back. Like we, we and Benji comes back into the team this week as well on the bench. So there's three more that have come back. So we're slowly getting the numbers back. And when we get them all back together, um, that's when I reckon we'll play our best football. I don't think we're quite there yet, but it's something to look forward to this to this week. I know you'll be watching from back there in uh, Old Maroubra Town. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll hear you cheering up here and. Uh, Stace and Pip and Ace, they'll be all watching as well. So enjoy yourself down there and uh, trust that the Rabbitohs are doing the best they can and hope you're all watching us on Friday night against the Eels. Here's what you need to know about our Round 21 clash against the Parramatta Eels. Proudly brought to you by whatif.com, proud travel partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Did you know, since 2019, Rabbitohs members and fans have saved over $15,000 using whatif.com forward slash Rabbitohs. Here are some quick facts to watch out for before we take on the Eels. Adam Reynolds is now just eight points away from surpassing the great Eric Sims as South Sydney's greatest all-time point scorer. Sims, who was also a master with the boot, achieved 1,841 points in his career. Is this the week Reynolds will break that record? Cody Walker is having one of the best seasons of his career, racking up 12 tries, 27 try assists and 34 line break assists. His halves pairing with Adam Reynolds has provided the spark in attack that has put South Sydney on track to break their record for the most tries in a single premiership season. There were emotional scenes in the Gold Coast hub as the boys were finally reunited with their families, with some members in the team having been separated from their loved ones for almost six weeks. The families being able to join the team in the NRL bubble also meant the return of Benji Marshall, who will be itching to get back into the swing of things after three long weeks away. Latrell Mitchell has found another level in recent weeks, pulling off moments of pure rugby league brilliance, including that impossible offload which saw Cameron Murray cross the line during the Rabbitohs' 60-22 thumping of the Warriors. His incredible strength and determination was also on full display last week against the Dragons, where he racked up two tries, three line breaks and 15 tackle breaks. After suffering one of their biggest losses of the season against the Roosters in round 20, the Eels will be looking to put that performance behind them and prove themselves to be a top four team. Star halfback Mitchell Moses is set to return from injury for this blockbuster clash and could just be the X-factor needed to get the Eels season back on track. Remember, 
Members get 15% off select hotels through whatif.com forward slash Rabbitohs. Use promo code Rabbitohs15 to enjoy these exclusive benefits. Yeah, my name is Phil Storm, the Stadium and Operations Manager for Hulkington Rovers. I first met Mossy when I first started at Hulkington Rovers. He was one of the first players that I got speaking to. Uh, a big man mountain of a bloke, very gentle giant who kind of made you feel at ease when you started. Uh, and then obviously he had only been in the role a couple of months when we went to the game at Wakefield where he had the uh, the incident which obviously changed his life. Yeah, it was just, it, it happened on the, on the 12th of January. And uh, it was just like a normal tackle. I went in and um, I kind of missed missed the bloke, and my neck went into hyperextension. Um, so I snapped the ligament in the front of my neck, and then as I was going down, I snapped the back ligament. <laughs> and then when I landed on the ground, um, the, the bones in your in your neck just kind of crushed together. Initially, I was paral yeah paralyzed from the from the neck. Oh, from my shoulders down, so I could only shrug my shoulders and, and move my head, so I couldn't feel anything. And that, that was scary, but, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get the surgery really quick. Hi, I'm Brian Stowe. Uh, I've been the operations manager here at South Sydney Rabbitohs for the last three years. Uh, well, my brother sent over uh, three Super League balls, Hull KR Super League balls, uh, and a that in UK what they've done is they've walked, my brother walked uh, all around all the various Super League grounds, basically from the west coast of England, uh, from St Helens across to Hull. About 150 miles, stopping off at all the grounds. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a joint effort really. Uh, everyone was very supportive. Most people from other clubs kind of joined you for two or three miles. Moss is just a normal bloke. He, he's more worried about other people. Uh, he, he never really takes into consideration what, what's wrong with himself. Uh, so it was actually quite humbling when he came along. He joined us for a couple hundred metres of the walk. Uh, unfortunately, we had to kick him into the van because he would have carried on doing more. But he's, yeah, he's just overwhelmed with the support that he's got, obviously from all the rugby league family. Hey guys, um, it's been a pleasure just to work with the boys in the walk and talk um, fundraiser. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure just to to see these guys walking, uh, that they've done 142 miles of um, 150. So um, we're, we're, they're coming into Kirkalla now, and um, hopefully um, some people can get out and um, beep their horns or give them a wave or cheer them on. So um, I just want to thank everyone for their support and um, hopefully see you guys soon. As much as he said it would be a good idea for me to do the same, I didn't fancy walking Auckland through Melbourne, Canberra, Sydney, and up to Townsville. Uh, so I come up with another uh, another solution was that all the all the NRL skippers would sign this uh, and do it, send a little message to, to Mossy, uh, which they have done. So these have been signed, uh, and these balls will be auctioned. Uh, two will be auctioned in UK at a, a farewell dinner for Mossy before he comes back to Australia, and then the third one will be auctioned across here at a welcome dinner. Obviously, with with Brian working for the Rabbitohs, get it signed by all the all the skippers. A bit of a, a bit of rugby league history, obviously having a ball signed by all, all, the, all the captains at the same time. Everybody has chipped in uh, and wanted to do something for one of their own. So without exception, every club uh, and every individual player and certainly the skippers have been, been absolutely outstanding in helping us out. Adam Reynolds from the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Got a UK Super League ball here. Uh, it's got to get back to Mossy. Make sure you sponsor it. Uh, it's going to a good place. See you soon. Ah, Super League ball. Raise some funds for Mossy. This is Nathan Cleary from the Penrith Panthers. Got a Super League ball here. Got to get this back to Mossy. Sponsor if you can and help him out. AJ, you there? 
Yeah, got you, mate. Got you. You only score six tries a weekend. Give me a celebration. I gave you one last year, mate. Good. We'll do it again. Hey, Mark, uh, can you put Wayne Bernard on, please? Yeah, yeah, here he is. Who are you, mate? Oh, Wayne. Oh, Wayne Bernard. Oh, mate, I was a talented junior, weren't I? But I didn't have the right pathway. Don't ring me again. Uh, we've jumped on board and helped out and the, and the lads, uh, as you would have seen in the last round, the lads have been uh, extremely easy coming forward and wanting to, wanting to show off their skill sets other than on the rugby field. Cook goes to Murray, now Walker, a kick here on play two, it takes a Tiger boot and it bounces to Alex Johnston who has Reynolds wasn't even touched then. Not one person laid a finger on him. A little post try celebration even though and is that a, is that a goanna? Well, I thought it was a goanna going into a surfer. <laughs> about that. A, a, a massively appreciative initiative from by Sportsbet, and one that will will benefit Mossy hugely. Uh, another one of the connections uh, at South Sydney, uh, just coincidentally, is Chelsea Smith, who's the marketing coordinator here at South, who ironically has to be the daughter of the head coach of Hull KR, Tony Smith, uh, and she's been outstanding in our efforts. So back in April, April 11th, I um, ran a half marathon. Yeah, it was really tough uh, just because I was studying full-time, working full-time, so I didn't really give myself any time to train. Um, so it was tough, but um, it's nothing compared to what Mossy's gone through and it was worth every step for, to do that for Mossy. And he's come a long way. He can walk assisted now um, and he can, you know, he's starting to use his hands a bit more. Um, but yeah, he's made um, so much progress, leaps and bounds. It's, it, it's going well, uh, but there's still a lot of a lot of work to go. Uh, you could see when he was walking, it was it was a struggle for him. Uh, but Mossy being Mossy, just obviously head down and, and cracks on with it. Just heartwarming to see the NRL getting on board with it too, as well as Super League and everyone pulling together to do the best for Mossy. And my brother, my, both my brother and myself come from a military background, and uh, we certainly sort of live by live by the motto of look look after your own. And I see this very similar. Uh, similar feeling within the rugby league community, both here and in UK. They very much want to look after their own. I'm one of those people that just, just to like prove people wrong, you know. So I've always been that type of person, and um, it's all it's all in between the ears. If you if you're strong there, then you'll be sweet. So I think all the injuries over the years have taught me lessons to prepare for this one. So you know. Um, it, it, it just made it a lot easier, you know. Uh, a lot of people probably say, "Oh, it's been tough." You know what? It's been it's been actually it's been a good journey, you know, for myself. You know, every day is it's exciting. It's like being it's like being reborn again.